Okay, hello friends and followers. Well, here's this PTO, which is still apart from the uh, T4XC. And I've removed all the grease from the uh, bearing in here with Q-tips, just rotating this thing and uh, taking advantage of the grease finally coating the bearings and removing it. So that's all done. So yeah, so these are now bare with no grease. So it's time to get these things. It's time to put this back together for real. Let's do it. So somebody told me about this stuff. I guess I, I got this off a blog for fixing drakes. This seems a bit thin, but it sure seems to work good. So going to use this. And the way I do this is I just grab a screwdriver. So I have this little screwdriver that I bought at Fry's Electronics. Fry's Electronics in Campbell, which is now defunct. Campbell, California. And I just get a little bit of this stuff on the screwdriver. And there it is. And I just kind of uh, dab it down on these bearings here. There's a view of the bearings right there. So just kind of dab it in here. It will eventually coat in there. And I hope this stuff isn't going to melt under the heat of all the tubes running, but I guess we'll find out. Another dab of it. So we'll put some in the back here and see how that goes. All right, it's too bad this isn't like I'm painting a Rembrandt painting or something, but I'm not. I'm just fixing an old PTO. All right. There was some guy in PBS a long time ago who used to paint like forest scenes and he was always drawing pine trees. And he had like a crazy fro haircut. I guess I'm not as cool as that guy was. All right, so that's all in there. We'll clean off the excess later. And now I just want to run this P. Oh, wow. It's a lot better. It's like, it's like flying now. This is going to turn out nice. So yeah, this, this grease is good. The old stuff was so thick in here that it was hard to turn. So this has already made like a whole huge difference in uh, tuning this uh, PTO. So, all right, well, that's, Looking good. So here we go. And I'm just going to Over there, you don't want to, I guess, put too much in, but you want the bearings to be coated, so that's probably enough. Now it's time to coat the worm gear. This thing is really, really flying now. The worm gear doesn't seem like it sticks on very well, but it just kind of throws it off. But maybe if we get enough in the grooves here, it's going to be enough. There we go, probably too much, but. Let's bring the fork down here, and yeah, you can see it really just kind of throws it off, but try your best. And that's probably way more than I need. Okay, and I don't want the stuff to be on too thick and lingering around because it'll melt most likely and then fall to the radio. So this really tunes nice now. Wow. So you can see the bearings kind of picking up the old grease too, which is bad. So I didn't get all the old grease out. You can see where it's there. Where? Okay. Yeah, it's kind of changing color picking up the old cruddy grease so and dirt you can see where it's already dirty with the bearing so 
Even though we're going faster, it's probably a good idea to clean these again. Oh well, I didn't want to do that, but let's clean it all out. So you want to get these clean. And you can tell that this is not the color of what I put in. Well, yeah, it kind of is. Anyway, I'm suspicious that it's still got some old crud in there, so get this stuff out of here. Get some more Q-tips and keep working. It seems like it's darkened a bit with some of the old... The old stuff in there was really, really crummy, so... I don't want to have this a mixture of the old and new grease. Kind of like working on a car. Wheel bearings. Okay, that... looks better. And some people actually do tune the radio about that fast when they're scanning the band, I guess. For something to be heard. Okay. There we go. Get this crud out of here. Yeah, there's still a little bit of... A little bit of uh, nasty stuff coming out. Look at that. So, maybe it's good to get a second, a second whirl through, get some of that stuff out of here. All right, let's take the fork way down, get some room. Get this stuff all cleaned up. Okay, well, that's criticism. I'm almost tempted to leave it the way it is now, but it's probably not enough grease in there now. So as you can tell, this doesn't need much grease. So let's do it again. And we'll put a little more on here. I'm, I'm not going to put on this too much this time. There's a little bit right there. We'll dab some into here, spread it around. If I could get the stuff to hold it, hit the bearings, that could be enough right there. Turn it a bit. Dab it into here. Guess I'll put a little more in there. But that should be enough. All right, now if we can get the bearings to uh, accept this stuff, we're set. It sure did accept before, didn't it? So that's looking like the bearings are. Uh, accepting the grease pretty well and let's see if they turn brown and crummy with the old stuff or not nope not this time so yeah that was some old grease in there that this stuff sort of melted or it became supple it looks like there still might be a tiny bit of old stuff in there but not much and i'm going to call it good yep Looks good. Well, there's still a little bit of crud in there, but it's better off than it was, right? Okay, so that's probably fine. So let's get some of the excess off now. Just dab it off. And uh, it's looking, you know. It's looking reasonable. Dab it off of here. You don't want grease falling into the radio or getting into the gears in the front. Leaching through there. You just don't want to have that going on at all. That'll ruin your day. Alright. So the bearings have some grease. We're not going crazy here, right? We're just Got them lightly lubricated here. So the more of these PTOs you do, the better you get at it, of course. This is like my third one or something. This is my second C PTO. And I learned a bit from the first one in the last video, so that's why I'm a little more confident, but I'm not gonna say that I'm an expert at these at all. Nowhere by far. 
Okay, well, that, that seems fine. So I'm going to call it a day with the PTO. And the front still has some old crud in there, but that's the way it is. So I'm not taking these bearings apart. There's no way I'm taking this apart. So call it a day. Um, I did put some grease in here. Let's just dab some of this stuff onto here. Actually, I'm going to... I don't want to contaminate with old grease, so get a new Q-tip and take a little dab like that. Just dab it onto the gear, worm gear here, a little bit here and there. Just get that worm gear a little more grease. It doesn't need much. And run it down through here. There. Okay, so that's all done. Let's check it all for crud and just general malfeasance. I don't see much going on here. It's bad. We could take a clean Q-tip if I have one left. Got one here left. That's all I have. Just kind of go through and pick up anything that's on the perimeter here. I guess I'm being a bit pedantic now, right? Okay, get this guy cleaned up a little bit. And, all right, that's good enough. Now, I'm gonna be handling these discs uh, so you don't wanna have grease on your hands when you're handling these discs at all. So it might be now time to wash my hands and come back. And maybe I'll go do that, so excuse me a minute. I'm not gonna stop the video. I'm just gonna make sure the hands are clean. Yeah, I can smell grease in my hands, so I'm going to go wash my hands, and then we'll put the discs in, and we'll assemble a thing, so just skip ahead in the video until I start moving it again, okay? All right, <clears throat> I'll jiggle this a little bit. As I was <clears throat> washing my hands, I thought, well, this is the part where really gotta get the PTO synchronized with the uh, real frequency on the dials. So, how clean is our little work area here? Looks like a bit of oil, let's just turn it over. Like that. Okay, so we can at least get the uh, main assembly together with the dials. How's that? So let's try that. So, dials have been cleaned. Uh, let's see, take that guy off of there. This stuff didn't come out great from the previous owners, but it's as clean as I can make it. There's some scratches. This is where you want to get these things, make sure they're mirror, mirror clean. This, these don't look too good, but I'm just going to rub these against my t-shirt and see if that fixes them. Just do it that way. A little bit of cotton on these things. And I'm holding them by the edges so I don't smudge them. Let's see if it makes them better. These are pretty scratched. All right, against the t-shirt, it still has a lot of crud on it, so yeah, I'm not sure if it's scratched or dirty or what's going on there, but it's pretty crummy. So these are still an improvement over 
what was there, but I don't I don't see that stuff coming off of there really. I'm going to give it one of these with a t-shirt and see what that does. Does that bring it off or not? Uh, yeah. I wonder if I got some soap on there or something. Okay, give it one of these. Maybe we'll just do this with it. Just keep going around with my t-shirt and see if that'll save me a trip to the sink. And just make it usable. Okay, that uh, looks it's really scratched. Anyway, it just depends how perfect you want to make these. People say to put toothpaste on them and stuff like that. Sometimes I just want to get it working again, you know, without too much fuss. But then there's a perfectionist in me that wants it very, very neat looking and clean. So I've been shining these things up on my t-shirt. Looks like it's improving. And you might think to blow air on these, but the aerosol from the air can has sometimes some Freon or something that comes out. It'll definitely eat these things alive, so you don't want to be spraying canned air on these things. Well, I don't love that, but this thing is really, it's really scratched. But maybe that's good enough for now, right? So, let's examine this one that has the, uh, and kill a cycle wheel. It looks a lot better. I'm gonna give it a t-shirt treatment too. Give it t-shirt treatment. I only wear black t-shirts as you can tell. Because I guess many years ago I thought that maybe made me cooler or something. I don't know. When I moved to San Francisco in 1997 people I think, I think some girl I met said that the only way black in San Francisco, and I was like, whoa, this girl knows she lives here. What happened to her? I don't know. Okay. There's still some crud. In fact, I'm scratching this thing by, I'm scratching it by rubbing it, so I, I don't even want to do that. Well, this isn't like, perfect, but it's probably good enough for an old 50-year-old radio, right? Alright, so you want to make sure the dust is off this thing because you can't get it off once it's together. That's, that's pretty clean, considering how it was. And let's look at the other one again. This one's a mess. Anyway, when you put these together then, as I said before, you want to make sure that they're lined up. So you want to get the zeros lined up. So you can see the zeros here. You see those zeros, line them up. Then you're all lined up. You can start putting it together. Of course, You've got to do the PTO alignment later. Okay, that's good enough. Now, to assemble, you want to keep these zeros together. And we'll take the um, the ten or the 100 with 100 kcs, 100 kcs, yeah, tenth of a mega cycle. So you want to take this one first, and let's mount it up. So start with this. Whoa. Start with this. Uh, what do we call this thing? A ring gear or something? Axle gear? I'm not sure. But let's start with this, building it up. And let's see, for memory, I think this guy goes on here now. This is the one we cleaned up to get all the oil and crud out of it, which we got most of it out with a paper towel. Make sure it rotates nice. It sure does. A little bit of play. 
So you don't want to put sandpaper in there. There's a little bit of play because it makes it worse. Okay, and now we got to put the uh, ring gear on. So this thing, I never took this ring gear off this, this back plate. So we'll mount this one now. Like that. And then we got to put this little round washer thing in here for real, which might be a pain in the neck. And now we don't want to smudge this thing either. I already see dirt coming on it. And, yeah, there's a little tad of a little lip of clearance that I need. So now we can grab the washer, this thing here, and try and fit it on. So this, you do want to now, for real, get this on here right. And that is difficult. It doesn't quite fit unless you stretch it. So I'm going to try and apply pressure with my hands on the bottom of this ring gear and get it to fit on. And I'm not having a lot of success here. Is that good enough? Let's look at it and see how it will. Nope, popped off. It, okay, that seems to me like it's on there. It's not gonna, it doesn't go on as aggressively as the other PTOA fix. So now it doesn't matter, I guess, if these wheels are lined up or not. You simply want to get the PTO locked on here with little locking tabs, which, as I said, are small and they can be lost. And I don't see where mine are. Oh, there they are. Okay. So this part is where you can really screw up and drop the stuff and lose it. So don't do that. So here's this wheel. I, I thought this only went on one way. Let's take a look. The three little pins are lining up with, you line up those three pins with these three pins, holes. So you line the holes up. And Yep, these look to line up. I thought these went on only one way, but maybe not. It should go on three ways, right? Well, that seems to work. So I'm trying to make sure that this works. And looks like it will. So then we can put one of these pins in and uh, I have a shag carpet here. And if these things drop, I'm dead. Okay, how many do I have? I got three of them here, thank God. These are like a millimeter long, if that. Maybe a millimeter, maybe two millimeters, but they're very small. And they can go flying, because I'm using needle nose to put them in, so. Let's put these babies in here. For real. Okay, so. Whoa, Let's see. You don't want to bump things. How did the German clockmaker do this on the watches and clocks back in the 1700s, 1600s, 1800s? Those gentlemen deserved a lot of our respect. So when you go to an antique store and see a clock, give it some respect. Okay, so here's a little gadget. Damn, this thing's small. I hate these things. And I'm going to try and just put it in without dropping it. If this goes in my shag carpet, I'm dead. Okay? It was dead. So let's line it up. Try and widgel this thing in here. Let it go without flying off. Alrighty, there it is. Now, what's a safe way to push it down? I'm going to use, I guess, this point here. Use these little guys and just push on it. Well, not screw it up, I hope. Pushing, pushing, wiggling, pushing. Okay, that one is in enough for horseshoes and hand grenades. Okay, it's in. 
let's do the next one and not drop it. Is it lined up? Yep. I can't really tell, but it looks like it's working out, so. Grab the next one of these off screen. And there it is. Man, I hate these things. Okay. I'm going to re-grab that one because it could fly off these needle nose. So you want to grab these things on a flat surface, that's for sure. Like, like a nice tabletop one, not a napkin. Alright, so flat surface. Grab it. Uh, you don't want these things just flying, up, flying off, you know? So that doesn't look too good, but let's try it. Bending my arm around. And... Okay, that went in. Give it a little push. And it's in. All right, the last one. Yeah, this won't be the prettiest display, but I think it'll be better than all the dirt that was in it. It's, I, I probably should spend more time cleaning this thing up, but life, life is only so long and Someday I'll be dying and think I should have spent an hour fixing a display on my deathbed, right? So let's not worry about this. Just get it done. All right. Oops. That one flipped. So I grabbed the last little widgy thing here, and there are kids outside screaming. Let's keep, whoa. It just flew. And it's gone. So much for that. I heard it land in the wastebasket, I think. Wow. So that may never work out. Yeah, so these things will fly. I heard it hit something. But I don't think I'll ever fly in that thing. So I may run it with two of those, and that's it. Almost a perfect operation, but not quite. I thought I heard it go into the wastebasket. And if I find this thing, it will be a miracle. A true miracle. It hit something like cardboard or something. It went whack. Because I heard it hit something. So when a part flies, Sometimes, if you just look for it, you don't move much around. You can find it. I don't see it there. You can just take this out. You look at what kind of surface area it could have hit, and I heard it make a racket a noise. I don't see it there. I don't see it here. It sounded like it hit cardboard or hit paper. Anyway, you don't want to lose these things. These are too hard to find. You can never find it. You'll never find it. Okay, well, did it hit a tube box and bounce? I don't know. I heard it hit something cardboard. So, here's where all the crap's been going. And. It's going to be tough to find it in here. It's so small. Could I make one of those with a piece of wire? Maybe. Maybe that's what I gotta do. I have to make one. Of course, I don't want to spend all this time working on this radio. It's already taking too much time. So, I don't really see it in here, but that doesn't say much. And my hands are now contaminated by junk in here. I can't say that I see it. But it 
could be anywhere. Oh, wait a minute. There it is. Look. Holy crap. There. House of Thongo. Womp. There it is. Womp. There it is. There it is. Look at that. So, when you're doing something like this and something flies off your pliers, sometimes you get lucky. I mean, look at this shag rug. If it, I've had things fall in there before, and they don't get found, so um, now I can't really. Okay, so you, you always want to exercise caution with everything you do with this stuff. So how do I minimize risk? I can drop it by getting it out of here. So you want to raise it this way and just drop it. And then if you drop it, it can bounce on the table and fall back on the floor. So grab it. I'm going to put it on this cup right here. Is that it, or is it not it? No, it's a piece of wire. I didn't find it. I thought that was it, but it's not. It's a piece of wire. Well, that was a cool, a cool little journey. May not be in here, period. However, there are bits of wire in here which made us work. There are bits of wire in here. That thing though has to be the exact dimensions. Okay, so don't see it there. There is paper over here that it could have hit. It hit something. So let's see if it landed here somewhere. It did fly. There. It probably bounced off and hit the rug. So I heard it hit something that could have fallen over here. Well, like I said, when you drop these things in a rug like this, you're not going to find it. So I don't think this is ever going to show up. I think the vacuum cleaner will find it, but not me. So again, you have to take precautions in this stuff. So I just sacrificed a perfect PTO on being careless. And what's that? Uh, I don't know. Okay, well, whatever. It's not going to show up. So. I think my best bet was the wastebasket. Was the wastebasket. And don't see it. Yeah, I've had these fly before, but never off a desk, so that's a problem. I hope it's in here, but you never know. Oh, there, that looks like, oh, look at that. Okay, now we can sing the song, Whoop, there it is. Whoop, there it is. Never, never give up, okay? When things seem too hard, don't give up. Use your senses, use your wisdom, use your instincts and find things. Do you see it? What about that? What do you think of that, eh? That's it. All right, now, let's get that damn thing out of here and not screw it up. Yikes. Okay, here it is. Okay, so, there it is, right? Where is it? Ha, ha, ha. Found you, you little bugger. Okay, let's put it on the top of this thing. Let go. It's now on a Pete's coffee cup. I'm gonna take the piece of wire and put it back in the wastebasket. And we'll put the bad we'll put the bad tubes in that blew up. Back in the wastebasket. Because you guys are troublemakers. And 
Probably gotta go wash my hands again to get the crap off them. Okay, so we have a second shot at this. So give me a minute. I'm gonna wash my hands again and we'll try it again. So give me a minute. Let's keep going. I still can't believe we found that thing. I'm thankful that we found it. It's almost a miracle. Maybe an intervention from God, who knows. All right, so I have this cap off of grease. I don't like it, the grease with no cap. And I did wash my hands, but let's put the cap back on the grease thing here. Yeah, minimize risk of grease spilling. And get rid of these boxes. Back in the wastebasket because the tubes are dead. Okay, now I think we're ready to go again. The little piece is right there. Boy, I hate touching this thing. Um, Grabbing it. To the desk. There we go. Now, let's resume where we were with the PTO after half an hour or something of looking for this stuff, huh? Okay. Where were we? Okay, we were putting this together, right? Whoops. We were putting this back together. And we we're putting in the third one. So how can I minimize risk this time? What if I... Why is it so bright? All right, there we go. So what if I just drop it on to there and minimize the, the movement? So let's just take it and drop it on here. Like that. And then we're gonna minimize the height so it can't bounce, it can't float away. So actually, you want to always grab this thing on top of here if you can. And minimize, whoa, see, see what I mean? You gotta minimize risk. So I'm barely holding it there, which I don't like, but I like the angle, so. And here it could fly off again, so. Okay, let's put her in. Uh, come on, go in. Nope. Come on. It's a miracle I found this thing at all. Okay, so I'm gonna mount it like this. Whoops, jeez. I don't even like holding this thing. Okay, let's go in like this. That seems safe. And just throw it in there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so luckily now we have three of these little pins in here. Let's put them in. Give them a little push to make sure they're seated. Push. 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 And that makes me happy. That means this thing's going to work right. It's not going to wobble. Because it's mounted eccentrically. Okay. Now, now check your work. How does it look? That looks fine. The pins are in. Okay. Let's now let's now put this back gear back in here. What are we forgetting? It seems like I'm forgetting something. I guess not. Okay, so we're back together. 
Now what goes on, this, this ring goes on again, as we said in the last video. And you can tell where the um, clip was. You want to make sure the side with the indention is, is down. And those will cover the pins. You don't want... You don't want it like that. You want it like this. Okay, that's in. Now, hold it by the ring gear and put it down. And let's get the circlip on here, which we know is always a terrifying experience because the circlip can fly just like that little part can. All this stuff can fly across your room and you'll never see it again. So, it's almost like you want to do the stuff from inside a box or something. Okay, so we put screens up or something. It's like insects. All right, so I'm trying to get the pliers on this thing now. The circlip special pliers. Okay. Make sure it's level. Yeah, don't screw this up. And I guess people that know these things well would say, ah, oh, you're taking too much time. You're inexperienced. You suck. Well, too bad. Okay, that looks safe and reasonable. Now, you don't have to squeeze the heck out of this thing. Just, I don't know, a millimeter maybe to open it. And... Again, you want to seat it so you want to seat this thing so that the clip does not go beyond the bevel. The clip and bevel should be level. Let's do this. Let's do this clippy thing here. Okay. Nope, nope, nope. What am I doing wrong? Let's do it. Let's Okay, so I'm going to hold it down like this because I need to have that gear proud. And let's now do it again with no disasters. Okay, I felt it go on. Now we got to make sure this thing is level. Is it level and true? The back of it is a bit not level. It's level here. It's not level here. So give it a little press. You just want to get it to be level. This thing has tension on it, but you can do that, right? So here, a tiny press. Don't break anything. Don't hit these. And no, I can't do it. So I'm going to tap it with a screwdriver, I think. Let's use the screwdriver that had the grease on it. Take off the gunky grease. And I'm just going to tap it. And what I'm going to do is, if I put the screwdriver here against the bevel and against this circlip, it won't go beyond the bevel. And that's how you make sure it's true. And give it a, now, the other problem is I don't want to be tapping on that pin. So, break the pin off. And where are we then, right? So, I'm going to go to the end of my old scrappy table here and put the pin at the end. So the pin is not having any force on it like that. There we are. I spin this thing? No, I can't. So, unfortunately, I put this thing on. You don't want to put the horseshoes on next to the pin, so that's not going to work for me. I can't tap it. That's not going to be an, a viable solution. So I'm going to look at it again and see how it looks. Yeah, yeah, that, that one leg is up, so I guess I'm going to try and just nudge it with the pliers here, the sword clip expanders okay so I'm gonna try and just nudge that down a bit yeah just a bit ok 
Okay, good. It nudged. So I think that's the easy way to do it, is just give it a little tiny expansion and give it a nudge down. Let's check it for now for trueness. It looks pretty good. So maybe that's good enough. Uh, you can feel with your fingernail if it's true or not. That is... That's got a small lip to it. So now the back end of this little circle lip is sort of nasty. It's got a little, little... So how would this affect our operation? We wouldn't have a good fit for the, uh, the rubber thing, so I want to have this thing totally true, totally flat, so... Yikes, I could screw it up doing this, but we'll try it. A little tiny nudge and bring up the back a nudge. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Have we scratched it? Okay. The back did come up. Okay, that looks a lot better, actually. Yep, it's true now, entirely true. So the back might be a little lower, but I'm going to call this good because I, I can't make any better. Okay, so these are together. And all the rings and things that need to be in there are here. It is ready now to be calibrated. So, spins nice, doesn't squeak. So that's good. So this is ready to go back into the... Uh... So now when you put this back in, you want to make sure that you're on a zero here. So you can just true it up like that. Okay. And I think, okay, I, I've I've puttered all around with this thing, so let's uh Yeah, it, it, you have to get this thing close to one revolution. So if you see this little pin in here, you have that much to play with as far as calibrating this thing, and you can't go beyond that. So you sort of gotta know what you're doing here. Get this thing really close. And so for that, I probably gotta connect this thing up to the radio and see where it's at, and then put the wheels back in. That's how to do it. So unfortunately, that's what you gotta do. So am I ready to do that? I guess I have to be ready to do that, right? I don't know of any other way to do it. I mean, the best thing would, would have been not to disturb this thing, but I mean, now it, it goes so nicely since I've disturbed it, it was worth it. So now I want to, I want to get this thing, I guess, on the radio and, and, and uh, calibrate it. So. Maybe I'll stop this video here then, and in the next one, we'll have it set up for calibration. And we'll go through that and see how that's done. And then it's ready to go back into the radio. So that's into the, uh, the T, I always get this wrong, the T4XB. So glad, glad you stuck around for the uh, adventure. And we did get it back together. So you might want to say, okay, great, but I'm going to see how it goes together again. So, okay. Who's, who's honking out there? Let's put it back together. So let's find the gear that is gone. There's a gear we're missing that goes here. And I don't see it. It might have flown off the table, but I'm not worried about that gear. It's big. Okay, here it is. Okay, so here's that gear, and we would want to, I'm used to putting it together a different way, so I want to turn this thing over. So it's upright, this is how it mounts in the radio. And I'm going to put this thing in. <sighs> Boy, I got a lot of dirt in this thing now. There's some dirt. After all this messing around, there's going to be some dirt, right? 
Well, it's not perfect, but it's better than it was. All right, so we can put this gear in, and as you know from the other video, and look how that is bent a bit. I wonder if somebody bent that, I don't know, probably, to make it align. So let's put this back in, and as you remember from the other video, we always put the gear in like this, and it will grip down in there like that. You see how that works? Let me put a hand here, onto here, like that, and we push this devil onto the uh, PTO like this. See that? And is that lining up? If it isn't, you can wiggle this thing here and make it work. Okay, there, oh, it's going on. It's going on pretty good. Okay, now when it gets toward the bottom, as you recall, we have to move that gear out for it to mesh, but everything else is meshing, so grab this lever here and move that out. And we'll see, it'll go in, right? Uh huh. See that? Okay, now rotate it until it clicks. Okay, now it's meshed. And now you can test it out. So put the rubber color back on it, which mine is shot, but we'll use it like that. Okay, go on like that. Put the knob back on. There'd be a skirt on here too, but we won't put the skirt on. And as you recall from the last video, we pushed this knob on, but not real hard. You don't really want to have stress in the gears. I think the um, C-clip would basically take the stress and not let it transmit down to the gears, but let's just put it on here. Pushing a bit. Okay. Right. Now, we're all on here. Um, I'm not sure these are lined up right, but let's just see how smooth it seems to go. From all this work, right? It feels really good. It doesn't make a lick of noise. And look at that. It's just perfect. So let's go to the very top to where we would have it on the radio. So the radio is how it goes it goes like this. So this is how that would be on the radio. So where are we now? We're Getting toward the stop here. Let's go this way. Really fast. Whoops. I did hit a stop, didn't I? Why? Oh, I hit a stop because I'm way out of calibration here. So, yeah, so. So, we know that we're way beyond the stop, so our calibration's all screwed up. So, let's spin this way. And you can see this thing is like buttery smooth. It's perfect. I'm really happy with it. I think this one didn't have much usage, but it really turned out nice. So, Okay, so we know that we're going to come to a stop here. You can see the worm gear inside here. It's going to hit a stop, right? So you see the little stopper in there, a little ring that they put in. So that's new to the seats. The 4C line has that. The other ones don't. They use like a, a detent in the front. So that's where it's going to stop, and that's kind of a cruel way to do it. But anyway, we know that this would be against the stop, so we can at least get this thing closer to where it should be. We know it's against that stop. So we take this apart again, and to move the gears, we got to pull the thing apart again. Not, not. Not the C-clip, but we have to pull the, we have to unmesh the gears again. So, what can we do about that? We can pull these two in again, and at least get the stop reasonable. Now we're against the stop, so turn these guys with with these pulled in. We can now turn freely, and I think that's about right. So, just from using the radio. 
we've turned it in now we want to make sure okay we we can't really check the frequency yet because we aren't in the radio so we can only see how this thing performs if it if it looks mechanically reasonable if the two stops line up from end to end so we're going to try that now okay so here we go there's the one stop right there can i forget okay that's that's dead stop there let's go all the way to the other side so we're going down the frequency there's and you see how the you see how the 500 doesn't line up um I would like that to be on top, so you could fix that, I guess, by pulling these again and rotating them, both of them holding both wheels, holding both wheels and pulling these in. And now we've taken that to the very top, so it looks reasonable. Okay, so that's lined up now. At least that looks reasonable. Let's. Let's go up again to the stop and see how that looks. So there's the stop coming along. And let's turn slowly and not break the thing because we want to hit the stop on the worm gear and see where it ends. So just go very slowly and see where it stops. Well, there's the word stop. It's going beyond it. That seems a bit too generous. Let's go the other way now. All the way down band. And see where it stops. So go slow here. Okay, look at the worm gear. It's not to the end yet. Let's go to the end and see where, where it leaves up. Okay, there's there's about the end. And we can see stop is coming here. And okay, so we can tell just from inference that this stop isn't lined up. So this this fork and the word stop, it's on the P and the stop over here, it's on the P. Let's go to the other stop and see where it's at. And we'll do like an inference. Maybe that's how to get it close. So we're gonna go all the way back to the top of the band and look at that stop and measure the difference. Okay, watch your gear here. Don't strip it out, just gently to the end. Watch your little worm gear there and Okay, so, interesting, so, that seems dead nuts on. There's the peanut nut stop, so, it might be really close. And let's see what the 500 lines up with the zero at the very top. Yeah, it does, so there's the 500 with the zero at the very top. By the fork, 500 and zero. Lining up by the fork. Can you see the 500 there and the zero? They're right there. And the fork. Okay. Go down to say 400. So, yeah, so these are all lined up nice. It's these gears, you know, this thing's all made well by Drake, so everything, you know, works out. There's the 400 and the zero. And you'll see the 300 and the zero. So, yeah, there it is. Anyway. It's probably time to put this thing back on the radio, but you can't put it back in until you know it's calibrated because you can't pull this all apart inside the radio. There's not enough room. So we have to jumper clip this thing onto the radio and check it out. So I'm going to do that next. And that will be the next video. So, yep, it's been about an hour with this thing, but that's how it works, people. So... You want to do something right, it takes a lot of time. So, thanks for watching. Have a great day.